So what we saw above here is using a single filter and make it going through. Typically in a layer we have uh, several uh, uh, many filters, many of these small filters and they learn, uh, the, the weight uh, will be trained to learn uh, different features of the image. So some will recognize the vertical line, some other uh, horizontal line, some other will re recognize colors. So these are, uh, the, in this uh, uh, view, there are the activation areas of, uh, um, of the filters of, of one, uh, one uh, initial uh, layer, convolutional layer. And uh, we see that here there are basic elements and more we proceed with the image uh, across the layers, more these simple elements become uh, more uh, um, become more and more uh, uh, aggregated and more complex uh, uh, and, and the layer learn to learn more complex uh, uh, features. So when we have uh, how do we in practice how do we organize the data when we have multiple uh, data, multiple layers and uh, it's Instead of working with uh, with planes, we work with with volumes. So our uh, layer uh, in in the in the input will have a different uh, uh, deep, will have a depth dimension, uh, and uh, for this is nice because it's uh, very resemble also the input. So this can be the different depth of the previous layer or can also be directly the input where uh, typically an image is RGB so it has at least uh, three, uh, three layers so we can process uh, um, a sequence of uh, images and uh, the way we do is uh, in, uh, in this way so we have one filter and this first filter will represent one level here in the output and we have a second filter and this second filter is independent to the first one and will contribute in the output of the second uh, uh, the second uh, depth of, of the output and this second filter has different weights as the first filter. However each of these two filters will work across all the volumes of the previous uh, uh, layer. So when, for example, we are here on the on the first filter here uh, uh, that is uh, that is on these positions, we'll have the weights for uh, uh, for all points across the image. So here we have we if we was only with uh, working with one filter and uh, we was working only with a plane we would had only four uh, weights instead now this gr this uh, first filter here that is responsible for this uh, um, this output will have four by four 16 uh, uh, 16 filters and all but all layers so will learn will be learned independently because they will have uh, different weights so the weights for uh, um, the four weights he here will be different than the four weights for this uh, level and these four weights for this level and so on however we will the weights here for this position will be slided so it is slided across the image but is not slided across the depth of the image so to say in another way we the weights here of this first filter will be the same here and will be the same here just applied to different parts of the image but will be different the weights applied to these boxes here than the weights applied to these boxes here. So here is how it I use directly the, the dot product here and you can see uh, the, the equations in, in, the, in the figure. 
So how many weights does this, this filter has? So here the input layer is a four by four by four. And here we have two independent filters of size two by two. So here is an arrow, it's not three by three, it's two by two. And then the results is of three different uh, position. So how many weights do we need? Well, each filter will have two by two by four plus one bias. So the bias is only one is not four. So a total of uh, uh, four by two by two plus one, 17, 17. Uh, we have two filters, so it's uh, 17 uh, uh, by two, 34 uh, uh, weights. So we can achieve all this one with just uh, 34 uh, uh, weights. And here, if you want, again, is the, is the formula. And uh, normally the number of filters for computational reasons is a power of, uh, of two, again, this for uh, optimizing the, the libraries that works with, with this. Before we finish the convolutional layers, one uh, uh, other uh, kind of layers, uh, very similar to the convolutional layers, well, actually it is a convolutional layers, but it doesn't have uh, weights to learn. It's called the pool layers. And uh, these layers do go, go like for convolutional layers across the previous uh, uh, image. And they compute some operation over that, typically the, the maximum, even sometimes is the, the average. And that, that's all what they, they do. They don't have weights. And uh, we, what they use it for, they use it for two things. One is uh, to reduce the, the dimension. So we, again, because uh, you, there are filters, if they uh, have a high stride, they can uh, quickly reduce the dimensions, but also because they apply this transnational invariance at a small scale. So convolutional lay, normal convolutional layers apply a translational invariance over a large scale. So it doesn't matter which feature is in which part of the image. And when you take the, the average over a small filter, so the maximum over a filter, you're doing something like, it doesn't really meet, matter if it is here or here, here or here. It doesn't matter if you are, uh, your, your line is a little bit blurry. And uh, the, the important is that somewhere here, there is, a, there is the element that we are looking. So it applied this translational invariance at a smaller, um, smaller scale. So to conclude uh, the convolutional uh, uh, networks, uh, uh, we have to say that uh, differently from feedforward uh, neural network for uh, classical regression or classification here, normally we have se really several, many, many intermediate uh, uh, hidden layers. And the idea is that um, we using these convolutional layers and mixed uh, with uh, with pulling uh, layers and repeating this one several times the image capture different kind of uh, features so the first one captured the simple and smaller features like uh, we saw in the in the figure ab above and the later one started to get more information uh, from these low level uh, features and uh, are able to identify more uh, sophisticated more complex features like uh, the characterization of, of a sign and uh, so they the learn and wait, uh, they specialize across layers and the sequence is like, uh, first I have some edges or uh, some very simple uh, uh, features, then I start to have simple parts, then I have parts, then I have opposites, and then I have signs. And then, then after I have sense, well, at this point I can add at the ending of my uh, neural network, a normal fully connected dense layers 
and apply the softmax uh, uh, functions that uh, we already saw and uh, this will output uh, uh, a probab uh, PMF of uh, probabilities and uh, I will be able to classify my image with uh, uh, whatever these, uh, these classes are. And finally we can, we can train this uh, uh, feed forward, this, uh, this uh, convolutional network exactly in the same way we did for feed forward neural network by minimizing the loss function.